Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. You join me in a new-ish car for the Scrubworks fleet, my little Daihatsu Charade, and um, today we're going to be doing a clutch on it. So this is the car, this is my 2003 Daihatsu Charade L251. Um, depending on where you are in the world, this car is known by different names in Japan. This is the Daihatsu Mira key car, or K car, however you say that. In right-hand drive exports, such as um, Australia, um, South Africa and the UK, it's called a Charade. Uh, and in continental Europe, left-hand drive, it's called a um, Sior, which is what it really should be, as the previous model was called a Sior in Britain. But this one is a UK model, so it is a Charade, which is a name that Daihatsu have been using for a very, very long time with a lot of their cars. Um, it is a pretty decent little car. It's one litre, three-cylinder. Um, has about 60 horsepower, I think, and it can get up to 70 miles to the gallon, um, which is um, pretty decent. So it makes a very good cheap runabout, and also in the UK, it's only about 30 pounds to tax for a whole year because the emissions are so low. Um, and this is one of the very last key cars that Daihatsu sold in the export market before they pulled out and went back to Japan a few years ago. So, pretty cool little car. So we can see under the bonnet here are three cylinders of one litre power. I think about 60 horsepower it has, but anyway, plan of attack is gearboxes on this side underneath here. So we're going to jack up this side of the car, remove that wheel, remove the drive shaft from this side. I will see if the drive shaft on this side can possibly stay where it is and just pull the gearbox off it. But yeah, then we'll undo all the bell housing bolts uh, after draining the oil, of course. Probably have to get rid of the battery at some point to get down there to access the starter. Um, but we'll see how it goes. It should be pretty easy as all this whole sort of drivetrain package is very small and sort of easy to handle. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we need to crack the drive shaft nut loose. And what I'm going to do, usually you do it on the ground, but we're already jacked up. So I'm just going to get someone to step on the brake and um, then use the breaker bar to uh, crack the nut loose. Okay, step on it now. There we go. Lovely. so small you can move them with one hand and there's my diddy little brake disc assembly pretty good news on the disc brake front the disc is nice and uh, it's not exactly new but it hasn't really got much of a, a lip on it it's, the surface is nice and smooth no real scoring pads have got plenty of meat left on them so on this side at least the disc brakes all good it actually looks like from the top of the hat but this disc is not the one that the car left the factory it looks like it's been changed at some point so that's nice uh, next uh, part of this is we're going to be. Um, I've got to work out how to get the drive shaft loose. I can either undo these bolts here and remove the hub or the knuckle or whatever you called it from the, um, the suspension strut, or I can undo this lower ball joint here and drop it down that way, and that will allow the hub to swing out. Um, or I can unbolt the wishbone directly at the chassis, but I probably won't do that. But before we do any of that, I'm going to actually drain the gearbox fluid. The drain plug is right there, because if I take the drive shaft out without draining the fluid, it will spill all over the drive, and that's not fun for anyone. Let's crack the drain plug loose. There we go. Now, get the gearbox oil out. I was expecting it to come gushing out, but it didn't. Just dribbling out, but there it comes. I'll last that drains, I'll get the drive shaft nut off. So we're going to move the strut. So I've soaked these two bolts here in um, some penetrating fluid to help them um, unseize. And I've got socket there and there. I've had to jam them on because the bolts are a little bit rusty to remove the mount for the ABS sensor and the mount for the brake pipe. So everything gets nice and free. Okay, we got the strut bolts off and all the clips holding everything on. 
and it does appear someone's been in here before because these um, strut bolts have um, copper slip on them uh, but it looks like they're in they've been in for quite some time so there we are luckily there's no camber adjustment on this lower strut which I was I was worried that there might be but luckily there isn't so we don't have to worry about that so next thing is just going to be get a little pry bar go in there lever this outwards and hopefully the whole knuckle will drop forwards and I'll be able to push the drive shaft out it's already nice and free on the spline so that's good so yeah should hopefully be fa fairly straightforward Yep, that's come free. So now, hopefully, the drive shaft will just pop back. Just get that final little end of it out. There we are. Cool. And then, just position the drain pan. Just pull it. Give it a tug. And then, oh, it's kind of in there. Yep, okay. That was a little bit harder than I anticipated it would. Would be. It's a really tight fit in the gearbox, so you have to get behind it with a pry bar and really give it a shove, but it does come out. And um, it all looks in pretty good order, so that's good. That's that drive shaft out. Now, um, the other drive shaft, which I was planning not to have to remove, um, looks like we're not going to get away with that, so I'm now going to go onto the other side of the car and remove that drive shaft as well. Okay, we've got both the drive shafts out of the gearbox. And a piece of advice, if you're going to do this job on your Daihatsu, get yourself a pry bar, because these drive shafts, the gearbox end, is in the gearbox very tight, and you will need a pry bar to get in and lever against it to pop them loose, you will never get them out just by pulling. Next job is going to be to tackle the gear linkages, which is pretty simple. You've got a stabiliser bar here, which is just held on with this bracket with two bolts, and then the actual gear selector rod, which is just held on with one bolt through this bracket here. Okay, that's the linkages undone. It's a pretty simple job. They can just hang there for the moment. So now we can attend to the bell housing bolts. So I can start from up here. The starter is right there, so that needs to be removed. There's a couple of bell housing bolts is there as well. I'm going to see if I can get away without removing the battery, because there is a fairly good uh, portion of access down here. But if I do have to remove it, then it'll have to come out. Um, and then also the clutch cable attaches down there to that pivot point. That hopefully just unclips, so that should be pretty easy. And then. So the, those top ones are done, there's a few more underneath the car, and then the whole gearbox should just pop off nice and easy. Okay, all top bolts are undone, starter is out. Took a little bit of more time than I was expecting because there's surprisingly little access to get those bolts, especially this front one, to get around those heater hoses, but got there in the end. Um, so now it's just a few bolts underneath and the gearbox will be coming out. Okay, all the lower bolts are done, there are only a couple of them. Uh, disconnected a couple of wiring brackets in the back of the gearbox and now it's ready to come out. You can see I've got the jack in position here so I'm going to um, sort of get one of my friends to lever the box and hopefully then it will slide off the engine and then just use the jack to lower it down. It's a bit of a tight squeeze but it should fit outside pretty nicely. In the fresh light we can see that I've been a bit of an idiot and have forgotten that there is a gearbox mount over this side of the engine bay. So uh, that's what's hot, still holding the gearbox in. So all I've got to do is undo those four bolts down there. And also there's an electrical connection, which you might be able to see down there, which, I've, um, which I didn't see before. That's probably the um, speed sensor uh, for the speedometer. So that will need to be unclipped as well. Um, barring that, that should let the gearbox drop free. I've got it down here supported by trolley jack, the engine is supported by a couple of axle stands, so hopefully just undo the mount and the gearbox should lower down nice and easy. Now hopefully, if you just let the jack down slowly, oh, not quite, the gearbox will come down. Okay. 
Okay, that's good. And there we are. Gearbox is out. Just get it off the jack. Bit tricky. Oh, there we are. And it's down. Okay, so here's our little teeny keycar gearbox. Looks in pretty good shape, really. Um, see our clutch mechanism here. Bit dirty, but nothing I wouldn't expect after 56,000 miles or so. So, first thing we're going to do here is um, get the brake cleaner in, clean it up, and then change the um, thrust bearing or throw out bearing or however you call it. Loads of clutch dust. We are using this um, Luck Clutch uh, rep set here, which is a nice and uh, quality set. Little dinky clutch on these key cars. Now we're going to change the um, throw out bearing. So, find a way to unclip it, clip the old one from the shaft, which I think it just turns or maybe has a clip or something. So, the way this works is there's a little retainer clip here around the throughout bearing but you just pull up and it unclips itself from the fork and it just slides off easy as pie. See our old throwout bearing is a bit crunchy. It doesn't help but I just soaked it in brake cleaner which probably removed all of the last of the grease out of it but definitely not usable. Our new one on the other hand silent and got a nice feel of grease in there. So for before we put it on just going to get some of my clutch grease and put some of, it, some of it on the shaft that the bearing slides along. And then we just want to pull up this clip like so. And then slide the bearing over the shaft. Get it lined up with the clutch fork, which it is there. And then just pull the clip ends over the fork. And there we are, you just have to bend these little clips with a piece of pair of pliers over the ears of the fork, but then it slots into place. Slides nice and smoothly. Okay, that's done. Now for the actual clutch. And here is our old clutch on the engine. Pretty simple to remove, just a bunch of bolts holding the pressure plate on and the whole thing will pop off. Okay, that's the last bolt. It's still held on on the dowels, for fuck's sake. So our pressure plate and then our old clutch disc. It's exactly like the one we've just bought, an Exidi. It's looking pretty worn out, yeah you can see it's actually touching the rivets there. So yeah this clutch has lived quite a hard life to be dead in only 56,000 miles. No wonder it was slipping. The pressure plate as well you can see has a ridge here which is actually, I can feel it with my finger, it's been worn into into the surface by the clutch disc as well on closer inspection you can see a couple of the springs to take up the vibration of the drive line started to become loose so that would have got noisy before long I suspect um, so yeah definitely need to be changed the flywheel if you can see if I just shine a light on it is actually looking pretty decent there's no real 
heat marks or anything like that on there. Um, no real damage from the rivets wearing through, which is good. Just needs a good clean and then we can stick the new clutch on there. Okay, so we've got the new clutch disc here. We've put a little bit of the clutch grease on the splines in the center. And we've cleaned that and the new pressure plate off with the brake cleaner. So now if I'm lucky, I can just slot the whole lot up into flywheel, which I've also cleaned with brake cleaner. And make it line up with the dowels. Just rotate it a bit. There we go, that's on. So now if I grab that little bolt there, yep, just run that down in there. Good. And then get all the other bolts in, try and line the clutch plate up as best I can. And then we can start reassembling everything. Okay, so the new clutch is in and the uh, pressure plate bolts are tightened up to won't fall out newton meters of torque. So next job is to put the gearbox back in. First I'm just going to put some uh, grease on the input shaft there and then we're putting it back under here with the help of the trolley jack and then I'm going to try and jack it into place next to the engine and get a bell housing bolt into the engine and hopefully just kind of slot it back together and then we can start reassembling things. Okay, after rather a lot of finagling, the gearbox is back on the engine. We're just now putting in some of the top bell housing bolts to sort of hold it there. Uh, next step is going to be to reconnect it to the gearbox mount there. And then once that's bolted back on, the drivetrain package will be properly supported again. And I can start putting in all the bell housing bolts uh, and also reinstalling the starter motor. Okay, all the bell housing bolts are now back in the transmission. It's bolted up to the engine properly. We've also reinstalled the clutch cable to uh, check that the uh, clutch was working. It initially wasn't working. It had, um, you could push the pedal all the way down to the floor and it would not do anything. It had no feel on the clutch at all. And what it turned out to have been was the cable had been adjusted all the way out by um, the previous owner with the old clutch because the clutch had got so worn down and it was bringing the biting point up so they had adjusted the, pe the cable back in order to prolong the life of the clutch. So all we needed to do was wind the cable back in and um, now the clutch has um, all its travel again. It uh, has a nice sort of high-ish biting point as a car like this should do and plenty of travel. So now that's all tested. We've also got the gear linkages down there at the back reconnected so the um, gear shifter is working again. So the last thing to do with the gearbox for the moment is the starter is down there. I'm going to reinstall the starter. I've plugged the gear lead, the um, speedo drive back in. And after that, I will then be, I think, I can put the drive shafts back in. Just slot them in through there. You can see the diff in there. Slot those back in. And then I can uh, start filling the... Um, gearbox with oil after that. Okay, starter's back in, wiring is all buttoned up. So now, next thing to do will be to reinstall the drive shafts. Once they're in, I can refill the gearbox with oil. Just slot that through here. So we've got this drive shaft in. These ones are really tight fit in the gearbox, so you have to hammer on the end of it with a piece of wood in between just to knock it into the gearbox, but once it's in there, it's nice and snug. I've cleaned the end of this drive shaft off with some degreaser, so I'm just going to use some hopper slip on the splines. So it doesn't seize up. And then get it back into, hopefully, the hub. There we 
back out. Bit of a squeeze, but. There. Now we can reattach the suspension. My gun is running out of battery. Okay, that's the drive shaft back in there. There we go, that's all the suspension bolted back on. So it's time to refill the gearbox with oil. We've got this normal uh, semi-synthetic 7590 GL4. And because the fill plug for the gearbox is up there, in a place that's not really very accessible, I'm going to use this to change the fluid. My trusty fluid syringe, I've put an extra long piece of pipe on it and uh, simply going to get the bottle of fluid, put the um, syringe in there, extract a load of the fluid and then put this into the gearbox and then push it in using the syringe. It'll take a little bit of time to get the fluid in there but it should be a pretty easy process. Pretty viscous stuff, this gearbox oil. Quite hard to fill the syringe with it. Just... So now, if I go under here, put that in there, and then just push it out, which is easier said than done with this little plastic syringe, but we'll get there. Right. Gearbox is full of oil. I've put the wheels back on. I've hand tightened up the drive shaft nuts. So, what I'm going to do now is just start the engine with the wheels in the air and check to see whether or not the clutch is working. Okay. Wheel's not turning, that's a good start. So, clutch down into first. No grind. Let the clutch up. In fact, the wheels engage. And that one's not spinning, but that one is. Excellent. Just the action of the action of the differential stopping the wheel from turning there, just on one side. So now put the clutch in. I can't really check from this side, but that wheel should have stopped turning. Go back to neutral. And there we are. I think. As a test, that is working. Now, the car's back on the ground, so just going to do up the drive shafts. I don't have the torque settings for these, but um, just doing them up very bloody tight should be enough. That should do it. Right, let's go for a little test drive. 
into first. Oh, there's our biting point. It's a bit low, so I'm going to have to adjust that up, but that's okay. Very firm bite to it, which is good. Second. Yeah, the brakes need to be attended to on this car at some point, but that'll be another video. I'm gonna have to get used to the new clutch. Alright. Into third, second. No slip. That's good. Cool. So the clutch biting point is a little bit low, so what I need to do is adjust the clutch cable. So I just release the clutch cable from this little keeper here, and then there's a, a twiddly thing and you screw it downwards to raise the biting point of the clutch. So turn that down a few times and then recheck the clutch. Okay, I've adjusted the cable all I can, taken it for another test drive. The clutch is about, the biting point's about in the middle of the pedal, which is a bit lower than I'd like it. I prefer it to be quite high on these uh, little front-wheel drive Japanese cars, but um, it's all right, it'll wear down a bit as the clutch beds in, I'm sure. So all I've got to do now is um, notch the drive shaft nuts in place and um, torque the wheel nuts to spec, and that'll be job done. Well, that's the end of the clutch job on the Daihatsu, so I um, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Uh, one thing I want to mention just quickly is I didn't change the drive shaft nuts on this car um, when I put them back on. And ideally you should, you shouldn't reuse um, drive shaft nuts. Um, but for the moment they'll be fine, they've been properly torqued up and staked down. So um, next time I'm in a car park shop I'll pick up a new pair and replace them. But for the moment they'll be alright. Um, next video I'm going to do is going to be one on the 180SX. So if you want to see that car again then um, stay tuned. And um, I'll see you next time.